You may have noticed that over the past few months, I've been fixated on finding the strongest Pokemon. I calculated which one was the strongest, I built the perfect legendary Pokemon, I found the single strongest attack, I refined my formula for the strongest Pokemon with the Paldean Dex, I've done it all. And all of the finds from those videos were strong, no doubt about it. But I also confined myself to a strict set of rules, only looking at real Pokemon, only selecting moves that they could actually learn, keeping stat spreads realistic, stuff like that. Now, rules are all well and good, but what if we, oh, I don't know, punted them out the window and just ran buck wild? That's right, folks. Dust off your action replays, fire up your Pokegen and Universal Randomizer, because today we're building the perfect Hackmon. One that is unkillable. Richard, hit that intro. Hey, so I've been doing a lot of these Pokemon statistics videos recently, and they've been a lot of fun, but I'll be honest, I'm kind of running out of ideas fast. So if you have any video suggestions, could be Pokemon related, could be something else, let me know in the comment section down below. So I know I just said that we were kicking the rules out the window, but uh, I do need to bring them back in for just a second, because there are a few different angles that I could look at this from. The one that interests me the most is in the context of a randomizer. Many of you probably don't know this, but for my first few years on the channel, I did exclusively Pokemon Let's Plays, mostly different forms of randomizer nuzlocks. Now, if you're not a massive Pokemon nerd like I am, you might have thought that I just started speaking a different language for a second there, but a nuzlocke is basically just playing the game with permadeath, and a randomizer is well, exactly what it sounds like. You completely randomize certain aspects of the game to make it more unpredictable. So, in the context of a randomized Nuzlocke, what would qualify as the strongest Pokemon? Well, if you're playing any game with permadeath, then for my money, survivability is key. Being able to hit hard is great, but you can't hit that hard when you're dead. And you can quote me on that. So with that in mind, why don't we break the game a bit? Arceus, step aside, Dr. Frankenstein is in the house, and he's ready to build something unkillable. <laughs> Eventually. But, for the sake of creating artificial suspense and getting that watch time up to try, in vain, to sate the insatiable YouTube algorithm, we're gonna start simple and slowly work our way up to insanity. If you're doing a box standard randomized Nuzlocke, just randomized Pokemon locations and stuff like that, then the most unkillable Pokemon is the same as it normally is. You haven't changed anything about the Pokemon themselves, just the locations. Consulting my old spreadsheet and looking at HP, resistances, defense, and special defense weighted in that order, then Blissey is technically the strongest Pokemon by that definition, but let's be honest, well, Blizz is a bit crap, and second place is perfect Zygarde, so, uh, yeah, a little bit better. But, if we throw just one more stone into this randomizer pond, and tick this one little box that says randomize abilities, you'll see that it wasn't a pond at all, but a dam. And we've just opened the floodgates. Now, any Pokemon can have any ability in the game, and now, now we can build something truly unkillable. A Pokemon that will carry us to victory with ease without getting a single scratch on it. Now, you may be wondering, doesn't using an unkillable Pokemon remove any strategy or stakes and therefore fun from the game and goes against the whole point of doing a challenge run in the first place? No. For anyone who's looked into this topic before, there's probably one ability that jumps to mind. Wonder Guard. Originally the signature ability of Shedinja, Wonder Guard makes it so you can only take damage from attacks that are super effective. So it follows that if you can get it on a Pokemon with no weaknesses, then there are no attacks that are super effective against it, and therefore it cannot be hit by anything. And lucky for us, there are two such Pokemon that fit the bill. 
Sableye and Spiritomb are both Ghost and Dark type. Ghost is weak to Dark and itself, Ghost, but resists Poison, Bug, and is immune to Normal and Fighting. On the other hand, Dark is weak to Fighting and Bug, but resists Ghost and Dark, meaning that all the weaknesses cancel out, leaving these two with not a single weakness. Ordinarily, this makes them pretty solid defensive Pokemon. Add in Wonder Guard, and suddenly, they're immortal. Let's break it down. Whoa. Like in the video so far, then here's what I need you to do. Tune up the band and give that subscribe button and you'll taste the old sweet chin music. And if you're not down with that, I got two words for you. Suck it! Oh, I can't hit that high. Just there. Yeah, just give it a, just give it a smack. Smack. Oh, God. So with this type combination and Wonder Guard, we've ensured that any damaging attack in the game will have no effect. However, there are still two things that can get through this seemingly impenetrable shield, those being weather effects and status conditions. Hail and Sandstorm both deal a bit of chip damage at the end of every turn. Now, it's not a lot of damage, but it is a slight indication that our unkillable Pokemon bleeds. And if it bleeds, it dies. And we can't have that. Luckily, both Spiritomb and Sableye get access to the moves Sunny Day and Rain Dance via TM which will change the weather to either sun or rain, removing the previous harmful effects and keeping you safe. So that's the first problem solved. While Wonder Guard does protect you from any damaging attack, there are certain status moves like Toxic or Will-O-Wisp that don't deal damage immediately and instead inflict you with the poison or burn status conditions, which slowly saps your health over time. Because they don't technically deal damage on their own, they are unaffected by Wonder Guard and are therefore problem numero uno for us. Now, you could simply run to the Pokemon and stock up on full heals, which can cure any status condition right from the bag. Heck, you probably haven't even bought any potions since you never take any damage anyway, so you got the funds for it. However, if you're one of those hardcore Nuzlockers that doesn't use healing items in battle, fret not, just slap a Lumberry on there and you got one free status heal per battle. At this point, there are only two viable, though incredibly niche ways to take you down. Things that you will almost never encounter in a regular playthrough and things that I could probably ignore and be fine. But for the sake of argument, let's beef up those defenses on that exhaust port there, shall we? The first thing that you're gonna wanna watch out for is the move Foresight, which, when used on a ghost type, makes them susceptible to fighting and normal attacks. Without their fighting immunity, our unkillable Pokemon is now suddenly weak to fighting attacks. This means that Pokemon like the Lucario or Machamp family, if they're at the right level range, has the potential to Luke Skywalker you. The second possible threat is the move Destiny Bond. If you kill a Pokemon that used Destiny Bond before they use a different attack, then they take you down with them. Badass to be sure, but also something that we cannot let slide. If you outspeed whatever used Destiny Bond, then it's not that much of a problem. You can just wait for a turn where they didn't use it, and then you know it's safe to kill them. However, both Sableye and Spiritomb are very slow. So if your opponent uses Destiny Bond before you and you accidentally take them out, then, well, you've accidentally leaked yourself some Death Star plans. However, in the world of Pokemon randomizers, you will soon learn that there is no new hope. For Spiritomb and Sableye both get access to the move Taunt via TM. Taunt makes it so the target can no longer use any status moves for the next two to three turns. This includes Foresight, Destiny Bond, any status inflicting move, and any weather setting move. Basically, if you have a Wonder Guard, Spiritomb, or Sableye, and your opponent is taunted, you can forget berries or sunny days. You cannot be touched by anything. So, with that in mind, let's put all these pieces together and craft this perfect Pokemon. Of the two, Spiritomb is the better choice, mostly because it hits a lot harder, but it's also only available from Generation 4 onward. So if you're playing in Generation 3, go with Sableye, otherwise Spiritomb is your friend. Now, obviously, it's gotta have Wonder Guard for an ability. 
For the held item, the Lumberry is a solid choice whether or not you're allowing full heals. Giving it leftovers instead is almost certainly not necessary, but also very funny. Like, if they manage to even get a little bit of chip damage from Sandstorm or something, you can just whoop, heal that right back up, you're ready to go. Classic. For moves, obviously, you want to start off with Taunt, followed by Sunny Day or Rain Dance. Doesn't really matter which one. Yeah, Taunt can prevent moves like Hail if you manage to get it off before them, but for the fringe cases of abilities like Sandstream, it's still use having a weather move. Dark Pulse is a solid attacking move since nothing is immune to it, it's stab, and it doesn't make physical contact, so you don't have to worry about abilities like Flame Body or Poison Point inflicting you with a surprise status condition. And for the last move, you can really go with whatever you want. You might be tempted to try a move like Toxic or Will-O-Wisp yourself if you want to get that residual damage, but you gotta be careful for any Pokemon that has the Synchronized ability, because they can bounce that right back onto you. And since we've randomized abilities, there's no way of telling who's gonna have it until it's too late. Another attacking move could be good just to give you some more PP to work with. Oh, for those of you who don't know, PP is Power Points, Pokemon's equivalent of like mana or MP from other RPGs, only with a name that's way funnier. PP. <laughs> it's like P. If you want a more defensive option, you could go with Rest via TM, so that on the very, very off chance your opponent manages to do some substantial damage to you, maybe afflict a status condition after burning through your Lumberry, something like that, you can just get yourself right back up to full HP and get rid of that status condition in one fell swoop. I mean, sure, you won't be able to do anything for the next two turns, but if you get a taunt off before you take that power nap, I mean, they won't be able to do anything either. And there you have it, the unkillable Pokemon. Every weakness addressed, every crack in the shield filled in. However, I can already hear you screaming at me in the comment section. There is one thing that I have not accounted for, one thing that I have willfully neglected. Yes, the ghost and dark typing doesn't have any weaknesses. Assuming that you are playing one of the games prior to Generation 6. Because, you see, the introduction of the fairy type changes everything. For fairy is super effective against dark and not resisted by ghost. Suddenly, the wall has come crumbling down. These Pink little buggers are like the guns sweeping through Japan, the downfall of our mighty samurai. Or is it? <laughs> you thought Spiritomb was the only tool in my belt? Guess again. Let's take a closer look at Shedinja, shall we? It's already gifted us with one game-breaking gem, and as it so happens, it's already got another ready to go in the most unlikely of places. I mentioned it briefly earlier, but Shedinja only ever has one HP, meaning that in regular gameplay, if you hit it with any sort of super effective attack, it's gone. When you randomize abilities and take away Wonder Guard, this makes Shedinja borderline unusable. Any attack will kill it in a single hit. That is, unless it just so happens to get the ability Sturdy. In Generations 3 and 4, Sturdy makes you immune to any one-hit KO move like Sheer Cold or Drill Run. Now, seeing how these moves basically never come up in regular play and aren't even that good to begin with, it's pretty useless. However, in Generation 5, they decided to give it a, just a teeny, teeny tiny little buff that turned it from one of the worst abilities to maybe one of the best. Now, if you are at full HP and are hit by an attack that would reduce you to zero HP, you instead survive at one, giving you an extra turn to do something. Now, this is pretty good on its own, especially in a Nuzlocke. But remember, Shedinja only has one HP, meaning it's always at full health. So, if you hit this Shedinja with an attack, since it's at full health, it will be reduced to 1 HP. But it's already at 1 HP, meaning it will remain at full health, meaning you can't actually do any damage to it. Sturdy will always protect it. This works in any game, Generation 5 or later, meaning those pesky fairy types are just like the rest, unable to scratch your mighty, 
discarded cicada shell. It's actually kind of a really gross Pokemon when you think about it. However, just like with our Spiritomb, weather conditions and status conditions are still a problem. And actually, in the case of Shedinja, they're even more so, since you can't afford to take even a single point of damage. You can give it the safety goggles held item to make it immune to the effects of the weather, but unfortunately, Shedinja doesn't get access to taunt. So when it comes to avoiding status conditions, your best bet is to just, I don't know, pray that you outspeed it. It's not ideal since Shedinja isn't very fast, but since there isn't any type combination in modern Pokemon games without a weakness to exploit Wonder Guard, this is the best that we can do. Unless... <laughs> oh, swallowed a bug. Yes, it's true that there isn't any combination of two types without any weaknesses, but what if I told you that we only need one? You'd probably say that I was crazy, and you know what? You might be right. Just crazy enough to pull it off. There is one Pokemon line in the current games that has no weaknesses, and that's Electros and its pre-evolutions. This whole line is pure electric, meaning their only weakness is to ground type attacks. However, its levitate ability makes it immune to all ground type attacks instead, meaning that in practice, it has no weaknesses. Sounds like exactly what we're looking for, but the problem is that if we randomize abilities to get Wonder Guard on there, then it has to lose its current ability levitate, meaning that it is once again weak to ground type attacks. Oh, if only there was some way that we could get rid of that ground type weakness without using up its ability, but, but I just don't see it. <laughs> the air balloon was a held item introduced in generation 5 that makes the holder immune to all ground type attacks. The caveat is that if you are hit by any attack, the balloon pops and you lose it. But if we say took a pure electric type Pokemon with Wonder Guard and gave it this balloon, well suddenly it's immune to all attacks, meaning that the balloon could never pop. This Pokemon would have to have Taunt to stop any of the moves we talked about before, and stuff like Trick that could steal the balloon away from it, and it would need some type of weather move to stop any chip damage. And luckily, there exists just one Pokemon that fits the bill exactly. Electivire, a pure electric type that can learn Taunt and Rain Dance via TM, and to make matters even better, Electivire outclasses Spiritomb in every stat except for defenses, which doesn't matter anyway since we can't ever get hit. It's fast enough to get a taunt off before any status moves can come its way, it hits a lot harder to preserve more PP, it doesn't have to worry about fairy types, in fact, given the choice between a Spiritomb or an Electivire in Gen 5 when they're both viable, well, I'd say Electivire is even better. A Pokemon that is truly unstoppable, unkillable, immortal. <laughs> yes, yes, I've done it. The perfect life form. Ha, 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 ha. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a Nuzlocke to win. And so, Charlie and his Electivire began their journey together. The Electivire was as mighty as Charlie could have ever hoped, with even the mightiest of blows glancing off his wondrous shield. Together, they forged the path of destruction throughout the region, failing evil teams and gym leaders in equal measure with ease. Though Charlie caught some other Pokemon, they quickly lay forgotten, for none could compare to the majesty and might of his own perfect creation. In short order, even the champion was forced to bend the knee to Charlie and his Electivire, unable to even scratch the beast's skin. And so, Charlie and Electivire were crowned champions. Not content, however, the two traveled to another region and became champion again and again and again. In time, Every trainer in the world stepped up to the mighty Electivire, and everyone was calm.
conquered, every trainer defeated, every challenge overcome, every allocate won. And so, Charlie decided to retire. After all, the work was done. There was nothing left to do, and he was growing tired and weary of the world. But Electivire did not tire, for it had taunted life itself. No attack of Pokemon, no weapon of humanity, no force of nature, not even time itself could scratch the beast. And so while its companion grew old, Electivire remained. When the cold grip of death finally took its friend, Electivire remained. When centuries passed and the memory of its creator was all but lost to time, Electivire remained. Eventually, even Electivire too grew tired of battle and of life, so it began searching the land for one who could best it, who could finally put it to rest, but found none. In time, it turned to the gods and pleaded, begged them to let it rest, but got no answer, for even the gods cowered in fear before the mighty Electivire. So it watched, as civilizations grew to heights, hetero, unimaginable. It watched as it tore itself apart, then rebuilt itself once more. It saw the last mortal creature on earth draw its final breath. It watched as the oceans rise to swallow the land, then get boiled away. It watched as the stars blinked out, one by one, in the sky until there was nothing left but darkness. It watched as the universe had begun its march towards the heat death of all things. But it could never reach it, for Electivire was incapable of dying. And so, instead, the universe imploded on itself, down to an infinitely small singularity, before in a big bang it was born again, and again, and again. Electivire lived through so many cycles that it defied comprehension, constantly searching for the one creature that could slay the beast, but none could rise to their challenge. Until one day, in its wayward wanderings through a frigid mountain, it found something, or rather, something had found it. A clay golem who knew of Electivire's curse, and like no one before, knew how to break it. How to remove the mighty balloon that had once carried Electivire to unimaginable heights, but now hung like a yoke around its neck. The two faced one another, a wordless understanding washing over them. Electivire used Rain Dance. Goruk used Trick, and finally, after longer than time itself, took the balloon from Electivire. Electivire used rest. Goruk used earthquake. It was super effective. Yeah, you know what, on second thought, Maybe we just stick with the regular old mortal Pokemon instead.